Welcome back to the channel. On a previous video, we introduced our brand new long-term tester, our Outlander PHEV. Well, it's been almost 4,000 kilometers and it's time to give her back. So it's a little bit sad, but today we're gonna share with you our highs and lows and we're gonna answer uh, a lot of your questions that you guys have asked on our previous video about this new second generation PHEV. So let's get to it. This is gonna be kind of a sad video because we have to say goodbye to our long-term Outlander PHEV tester. Uh, it's, been, it's been a blast having it, uh, but we're not gonna tell you all about this vehicle on this video because we've done several videos already. Uh, so make sure I'll leave links in the video description to check those videos out. But just here's a little recap. This new second gen PHEV more range, bigger, it comes standard with a third row now, uh, didn't before. And like most vehicles in this class, if they do have a third row, you gotta be realistic. It is a compact vehicle. It's good for smaller kids or an adult uh, for shorter trips. But it is nice to have that option to have that third row. Uh, and yeah, over the course of a few months, we probably only used it once or twice. Um, but that, goes the same with when we had our Highlander hybrid three rows we rarely used it but it's nice to have yeah and so, then even the space it provides over there right yes that on the lot, that is cheap. yeah you do get more room for sure when they are folded and it is a neat way that they fold in now opposed to the gas version where you have to take the headrests off these just all fold in all together so this new PHEV has a 20 kilowatt hour battery now with a longer range of 61 kilometers, which is about 38 miles. And one of the biggest questions you guys have asked is how much range are you getting in a real world, uh, in a real world environment? And I'm gonna say about between 55 or 50 to about 65. It varies depending on outside temperature, um, the load, are you, you know, are you a hard driver? Are you going up a lot of hills? So it's all going to depend. I've had a lot of viewers in the comments, you guys, that have, you know, that have commented that they've done like 80 plus kilometers without the, the gas engine coming on at all. Uh, and, you know, someone, someone saying that they've actually driven 10,000 kilometers with only two tanks of fuel. Right, so it, it's all going to vary, uh, but it is quite thrifty. One thing to note though, even though this does have a heat pump, which is gonna reduce the time the gas engine kicks on, heat pumps aren't efficient when it's super cold, but also, you know, uh, this engine will kick on, the gas engine will kick on at certain times, even when it's kind of warm out or you, you don't even have a load on it, because this system is, is pretty smart it just knows when it needs to you know use that gas engine maybe to create more electricity to either maybe more be more efficient yeah. to heat the batteries up per, perhaps uh, and you know how smart it is we didn't put gas in this for a long time and one day I was fully charged yet the gas engine kicked on as soon as I started it I'm like huh what is going on here and then we got a display and it said that we had to add new gas in here. Not, we didn't have to drain the old one, but we, we had to add new gas, a certain amount uh, in order to get back into EV mode. So it knew that we had this gas in there that long sitting and the, sitting that long. And so it's not good for the vehicle. So maybe sometimes when it is coming on, it's doing it just to cycle everything through. And that's a good thing. That's, that's good for the longevity of the vehicle for sure. All right, next question asked, what kind of mileage are you getting when the battery is drained? Excellent question. Of course, everybody wants to know that. And once again, that's going to vary as well, uh, depending on what type of driving you're doing. We live close to the freeway, so we always have to hop onto the freeway to go places. So I would say 85 or 80% of our driving is highway driving at higher speeds, and you're not gonna get the best fuel economy doing that, but even then, with a completely depleted battery. Uh, here's an example here that we average, you know, like basically around seven, around seven liters per hundred kilometers. That's without any uh, battery at all. Uh, if you were going 
to drive at slower speeds, you're going to get much, much better uh, numbers than that for sure. But, and also, the nice thing about this system is like right now, we are actually um, <laughs> we are actually depleted right now. But this vehicle, even if it shows zero, it will go in and out of electric. Uh, so it'll run just like a regular hybrid and it's seamless. We just compared this to the CX-90 in a video. Make sure to, to watch that one too, that PHEV, and what a difference. You know, Cynthia, you, know, you really notice a difference yeah. on that. Last time you asked me if this one, I was a purely running on gas or electric. I don't know the actual difference. Yeah. But the other one I noticed, yeah, big difference on that one. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, and, and because this one is so seamless, when it goes yeah. in and out, you really don't even notice it at all. So uh, yeah, so you can get better, and that's actually pretty well, I think that's even below what the, the actual rating is, so I think that's pretty good, I think. Next question, how about the charge or the save modes on here? Uh, yeah, I tried and I played around with those just for, you know, to, to tr do some research, and there is a, a, um, a penalty to pay for the fuel. I average about, I was gonna say about two liters per 100 kilometers more using the charge function. And when would you use that? If you know that you're going to be driving up a large mountain pass and you're on the highway, put it on charge if, if you don't have any battery left and it's gonna charge up fairly quick. And when you get to the mountain pass, it's going to use less gasoline getting up there and that's a good way to use it. Other than that, I really can't see the point. Uh, I, you know, we just really set it and forget it when we drive this car, and that's one of the, the biggest features that we love about it. It seems you set it and forget it. We never ever put it into eco mode to try to get the best fuel economy. These are our real world numbers for sure. Um, so, yeah, so if you really need the power, yeah, just put it there. Put it onto charge and or save, and it's going to get you power. Next question. Can you fit a spare tire in the back? Answer, no. Why? Because there is no well. Once you fold that third row down, it takes up that area. Um, some people I've read on a forum, some people have actually taken out the third row though. And apparently it's not very hard to do. If you, you know, seldomly use a third row and you want the extra room, just take it out. So Cynthia, next question. How does it compare to the Highlander? Well, you know what? Um, they're both three row SUVs. However, there, there's a big difference. First of all, this is a compact SUV. Definitely not as big as the Highlander for size, size wise, but this is a plug-in hybrid where the Highlander does not have a plug. It's just a hybrid. So if you want the plug-in EV experience, you're gonna have to go with the Outlander. And I think that this one offers more features and more value for the price. Cynthia, next question. Can you turn off the rear climate control? And the answer is no. You can't <laughs> actually turn it off. I was surprised. I thought, yeah, of course you can. You can control the, the temperature uh, from the front and back because this does have tri-zone climate control standard, but you can't completely turn it off. What you can do though, is you can just close the vents off. Yeah. Right, so that's, that's an easy fix. So our real world test, we've put on over 3,600 kilometers, which is over 2,200 miles. And uh, we have averaged 3.7 liters per 100 kilometers. So, you know, I'll do a conversion there for the miles per gallon as well. And yeah, I think that's excellent. And the beauty of it is that we just plugged in just into our house, into our regular 110 most of the time. I just have to love the value this provides. It really, you know, has the 360 camera, yep. which it's so handy when you do ca <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's getting cold out there. <laughs> it's super handy for parallel parking or even small spots for parking spot, right? And then also the wireless car play and uh, the panel roof. A lot of features that, you know, it brings. It just makes life so much easier. Well, let me add a few more, okay? The head-up display oh, yeah. is awesome, right? You talked about the wireless CarPlay. The Bose system, the, you know, the available, the, the semi-analog leather quilted seats that we have here with 
memory settings for both front passengers and massage. Now, it's not like you're going to the massage therapist type of massage, but it's, it's, it's okay. At least it has it. Most vehicles don't even give you that option at all. You know, the hands-free tailgate, the oh, power yeah. tailgate is a, like, like it's a big, big, big plus there. Like that, you know, some vehicles don't even offer it. And uh, yeah, there's so much value here for sure. Uh, next thing that I like is how seamless it is. We talked about it. It's just so easy to drive and just, you don't really need to know anything about, about getting good economy. Mm -hmm. Just put it into regular and just drive it. You know, you plug it in. If you don't plug it in, who cares? There's no range anxiety. If you don't have a plug around you, um, no big deal. You forget to plug it in, who cares? Whatever, you're just gonna use up a little bit more fuel. One of the biggest likes about this vehicle, there are a lot of other likes, but one of the biggest ones, this qualifies for a lot of EV rebates. Uh, you know, so check with your local area what, what rebates they can qualify for. But here in BC, in Canada, this qualifies for $7,000 of rebates right now. In Quebec, $10,000. So if you equate that into the price, so the top trim of the Outlander PHEV uh, goes for about $57,000, $58,000. So you take off that rebate, now you're in, in the $50,000 range. That's the same price as a Honda Civic Hybrid, uh, yet you're getting you know, a lot more features and a lot more premium features out of that, plus a third row, plus a plug-in hybrid that gets you into the HOV lane with one occupant, those great front row parking spots. I got them at the airport a couple times. If there are rebates, it really is a no-brainer. All right, Cynthia, so what about dislikes? Anything you didn't like? Not really a dislike, it was more of something I prefer. I would prefer probably a bigger screen for the infotainment. Yeah. I think the nine inch works pretty good, but yeah, mm -hmm. you know, like we, we, we drive a lot of vehicles, so yeah. we're used to, you know, the screens are getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> um, you know, my dislikes are not really like dislikes, but they're almost it's like a wish list. But I, you know, this does not have ventilated seats. Uh, it's a fairly warm day today. I wouldn't mind having some ventilation on these seats and it's I'm not an option. Cold, so I don't <laughs> yes, that's yeah. a problem. <laughs> so it's, it's not an option. So yeah, it'd be nice to see ventilated seats. Uh, second thing, the charging. It's pretty slow. So 110 charging, you know, plug it in, which, which is what we do. Uh, we do have a level two as well. If it's at zero, it's gonna take 16 hours for it to go to full. If your, your commute's 50 kilometers each way, so you're going to be zero when you get home, yeah, it's either not gonna be fully charged or uh, you have to just put it in really early to get that thing charged up. But who cares, once again, if it's not fully charged, you're just use, gonna use gas. And level two is uh, six and a half hours, still a little bit on the slower side, but one good thing about that, the slower charging does help the battery for its life expectancy. Like so. You know, there, there's a trade-off there. Uh, this does have level three DC fast charging as well, which is really uh, quite rare in this category of vehicle. Also, if you plug this in after driving and you see the display and it says, oh, it's gonna take 20 something hours for it to be full, don't worry. That's probably because you've been driving it, the battery's hot. So it actually has to let that battery cool down before it ramps up the charge, that's it. Are you gonna be sad to see this go? Absolutely, yeah. Really enjoying having it. You know, so easy for everyday life, right? Never worry about the mileage. Never worry about the space. So good. Yeah, it's just like we're we're the type of people we like to set and forget it. Like we said, just put it into regular normal drive and just drive it. And and yeah, we just plugged it into our regular 110 all the time, and we've got an excellent fuel economy. Fun. One 110. <laughs> so, anyways, um, yeah, it will be sad. The vehicle has been great for our family. The size has been good. Uh, the girls have never complained back there. We've I got, have... what did you complain about? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing yeah, exactly. as you see, nothing. You have the sunshade, the, the seats uh, go forward and backwards. So yeah, it's gonna be a little bit sad, but on to the next one, I guess. <laughs> That's it for our long-term review of the brand new Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. Uh, hope you liked the video. Make sure to check out all those other links on our reviews and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Ciao.